Hi guys, I welcome you all to the another video of software testing by MKT. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the different types of software development lifecycle we have. So we have different types of software development lifecycle models to adopt. The first is waterfall model, then spiral model, VNV model, hybrid model, agile model, prototype model. So we have different types of software development lifecycle model. So in this particular video, I'm going to talk about what do you mean by waterfall model as a software development life cycle. I mean, whenever company tries to make any software, if they follow waterfall model, what are the advantages of it? What are the disadvantages of it? Guys, before I proceed with this video, I want you guys to make sure that you have watched my video, which I have uploaded before that is software development life cycle. If you have not still go watch it, please then come to this video because in this video, I'm going to talk less about software development life cycle. I'm going, I'm going to mainly concentrate about what are the advantages and disadvantages of choosing a waterfall model as a software development life cycle. So let's get started. So in the waterfall model as a software development life cycle, there are many uh, seven phases. The first is, let me teach you guys. Waterfall model. So in this, the first stage is called as requirement collection. Requirement collection. Then comes the feasibility study. Then comes the design. Then comes the coding. Then comes the testing. Then comes the installation. Then comes the maintenance phase. So these are the seven stages of waterfall model. Now I'm going to tell you why, what is waterfall model? It's just step by step procedure or a standard procedure to develop any new software. For that purpose, we choose waterfall model. It is also called as basic model. It is also called as tra tradi traditional model. It is also called as sequential model. Now, how waterfall model is different from other models? So, in waterfall model, require once after the requirement collection is done and feasibility is done, requirement will be freeze. You cannot go back and change the requirement. This is how waterfall model is different from other models. It's I will tell you one more time. Once after the requirement collection is done and the feasibility study is done, then requirement will be freeze. You cannot go back and change the requirement. Guys, if you are not understanding what do you mean by all these things, I will request you once again to go back to my software development lifecycle video, watch it then come to this video. So how waterfall model is different from other video is, once after the feasibility study is done, you cannot go back and change the requirement. Requirement change is not allowed once after the feasibility study is done. It will be freeze. You cannot go back and change it. This is how waterfall model is different from other models. Now, what are the disadvantages of choosing a waterfall model? If you choose waterfall model, the first disadvantage is requirement changes are not allowed. If and all, there is a defect or bug in the requirement. It will flow till design, it will flow till coding, and it will flow till software is ready. So we have to uh, we have to put our more effort, starting from requirement collection, then feasibility study, then design, then coding. So if and all there is a defect in the in the requirement itself, it will flow till the end of the software. So total time taken in reworking it, it will be more. So time consumption is more if you do. If you if we take waterfall model, good. Here total investment is more. How? As I said in the last part, 
if and all there is a bug in the requirement it will float to the end of the software so total time consumption is more if total time consumption is more total investment is more this is the third point now uh, in the biggest disadvantage of waterfall model is here requirement collection and design phases are not tested testing will start only after coding next point here uh, testers are hired at the la later stage of the cycle that is here testers are hired at the later stage of the cycle once after the coding is done and these and all phases are not tested so these are the main big disadvantage of choosing as a waterfall model and uh, should wait for a very long period of time just to see the software so these are the main big disadvantage of choosing a waterfall model now i'm going to tell you what are the advantages of choosing as a waterfall model if you are selecting a waterfall model your quality of the product will be good first part now the second since requirement changes are not allowed chances of finding a bug will be less and it is an advantage for the developer since he need not uh, recode again and again since the requirement will freeze whatever he has developed is ready now if tester is finding it defect he needs to fix it that's all since the requirement changes are not allowed it is an advantage for the developer initial investment will be less since the testers are hired at the later stage of the cycle clear now for now the question arises for which all product projects we should go for waterfall model so the answer is for small projects or where the requirements are fixed there we can go for waterfall model clear you must have seen i have drawn waterfall model as like this now the question arises why why like this why not like this the reason i have uh, drawn waterfall model like this once after requirement collection is done we do feasibility study once after feasibility is done we do design and i have said already in waterfall model back tracking is not possible after feasibility study so after design we do coding after coding we do testing after testing we do install and then we do maintenance now the question arises why i have drawn like this see guys wherever you see waterfall model picture you will get it this way now question is important the question the reason is understanding is very easy guys let's suppose these are the steps if you try to pour a water on top of it it will go till end and water cannot come from end to the top in a similar way once after the feasibility study is done you cannot go back you have to go only in this direction once after requirement collection is done feasibility study is done requirements are freeze you cannot go back and change the requirement you have to proceed like this that's why it is called as waterfall model i hope it is very understandable i have explained in a very easy language please let me know if you have any question regarding this video give a thumbs up to this video if you like this video and please subscribe to my channel i have added my quora link in the description and also my uh, blog in the link description please stay tuned thank you